Greetings to all my fellow Land Cruiser nuts, and welcome to what I call affectionately Toyota Position Sensor Hell. If you have a 3FE, uh, FJ62, or FJ80, you will likely encounter this failure you know, at least once. And uh, I can tell you from my experience that this has not been easy. This has given me a lot of frustration, so I wanted to make this video uh, to kind of talk you through the proper procedures, what I used, and how I finally got this issue fixed. And if you replace this on your truck, you're likely going to have words with this device at least once. So if you're having idle issues, poor acceleration, uh, engine surging, or a code 41 or 51 on your 3FE, it is likely the culprit because the TPS plays a large part in how the engine idles by sending a signal to the ECU, letting it know how far to open the throttle, you know, in, in, in from fully open to fully closed. The ECU then uses that data to calculate how much fuel to inject into the engine, uh, keeping the air fuel mixture correct. So as this thing opens up, all that information is being sent out from this, going to different places, and the ECU balances it. At idle, this is gonna let the ECU know that the throttle is closed and then it's going to send the signal over to the idle air control valve which if you're on the truck it's going to be somewhere over in here uh, to let the engine stay steady and you know keep running today i want to give you some tips on how to adjust this you know like i said to limit your frustration and and give you and show you some of the tools that i used to, to do this job one of the first things you're going to notice is that I have two throttle bodies here. I'm going to show you things, how to do things on this one, as I really don't want to loosen too many things on this one because I have it set and it's correct. And these things are super sensitive and hard to get back to their position once you, un once you loosen them. But we are going to be doing things on both so that you have a better understanding of how to adjust this. Also, really my first tip on this is to don't, try to go cheap don't put an aftermarket tps on this use an original toyota sensor and the part number is 894521450 so what we really want to do first if we encounter this problem is to verify that we have a problem with the tps sensor i will show you how to do that in a minute but we are going to continue as if the tps is bad and then come back to this Really, the next other thing I have is if you, you once you verify that you have that a bad TPS sensor, give your throttle body a good cleaning, but do it before you put the new ECU on because or the new throttle position sensor on because the chemicals and brake cleaner and some of the other things you might use could cause problems with your new t TPS sensor. Now let's go over some of the tools that I use to do this job. I won't say that everything is a must-have, but having some of these items made it this a lot easier. The first thing is a good multimeter. Feeler gauges is next. Now I had to buy two sets of feeler gauges to get the correct settings. I'll show you what I mean shortly. You're gonna need a screwdriver with a JIS bit. If you plan on keeping the set screws, you don't wanna tear those up. So be sure to get you a good set of JIS bits to take some of these brass screws off. If you can look here on this one, you're gonna notice I upgraded them to accept allen keys these are an m7 i can't remember the exact um the exact specifications on those but i'll put them in the description below you're going to need an eight millimeter wrench for the stop screw settings when you adjust that uh some allen keys as well and this isn't completely necessary but i did find this really useful and the reason was it has these small alligator clips with these rubber boots. If you don't use these, you might have to have an extra set of hands help you because there's no way for you to hold the test leads onto their position, rotate this and tighten it with two hands. So this kit is very cheap. I've got it from Harbor Freight. I think it's less than $20, but it also has other purposes too and other test leads and stuff if you're have a lot of electronic stuff that you're diving into and, and, and these older Toyotas, it might be a good thing to have something like that uh, because it allows you to test um, 
the ECU and other small points that you have to get a very fine needle into. So, but these test lids, uh, test leads are a great thing to have because they're, they're got these rubber boots. So it keeps them from bumping into each other and they're small. Next, we're going to get into the feeler gauges. I did not have the exact feeler gauges that Toyota specified, but I want to show you what I used as close as possible to get as close as possible. Toyota needs you to have a 0.93 millimeter, a 0.77 millimeter, and a 1.09 millimeter. I used this combination of 0 0.381, 0 0.406, 0 0.152, and that got me 0 0.939. Then I used 381 and 381, they got me 0 0.762. And then for the 1.09, I used 60, 0 0.635, 0 0.254, 0 0.203, and that got me 1.092. So that is as close as I got. I went through hours of, and I'm not joking when I say hours, of going through all kinds of calculations and trying to find the best set of feeler gauges that would get me to the, to the desired outcome. Now, if you have a 0.93 or 0.77 or 1.09 millimeter feeler gauge, put it, please put it in the comments below where you found it. Or also, if you found a better combination that gets you closer, please post that as well. Uh, any bit of information for people would help. Now, if you remember what I said earlier that you're gonna need to verify the TPS is bad, I will walk you through that now, but the procedure that we are gonna use is also the same one that if you've gotta put a new one on, you're gonna kind of follow as well. So we're gonna step back in time for a moment and imagine I just pulled this off. I would say do a visual inspection first and check these, these set screws make sure that they're not too far to the left or too far to the right. This thing may have slipped. It could have got loosened. Somebody may have messed with it. You know, if you had somebody else work on your truck and just verify that it looks somewhat correct and it's tight. If it appears that nothing's been messed with and it looks like it's in position, it appears to go factory. We will go into our first position, our first measurement to validate it's defective by testing terminals V2 and ETA. All right, so we got our alligator clips up to we're on VTA and E2. If we look at our manual here, uh, it shows VTA is the second one down and E2 is the fourth terminal. And that's exactly where we have our feeler gauges. And if you look uh, on the multimeter, we're at 3.3 kilo ohms and we should be less than uh, 6.3 oh it should be the 0 0.3 to 3.3 so we're actually good on that spot so now we'll move over to the next test now we're going to get into doing the vta to e2 and let me pull this one back over here because you're going to notice this, this is going to look a little different uh, in order to show you where i'm putting these feeler gauges i took this uh pot off and the bracket that goes with it you can see it right there so that you had a clear image of where these feeler gauges go. And this is the 0.77 that you're doing, and it goes in between that set screw and right there. And so we have our VTA to E2 setting with a 0.77 millimeter feeler gauge. IDL to E2 should be less than 2.3. We look over here and we have no resistance. So we know that we have something wrong. And one of the things I, I forgot to mention in the opening segment is you may not even realize you have a throttle position sensor. It may not throw a check engine light, but if you, you know, if you jump your OBD1 to put it into diagnostic mode, it'll more than likely start flashing at you a code 41 if you have a problem. So we know now that we have a potential problem with our TPS sensor. You can either stop right here or you can uh, just go ahead and say now, hey, we got a problem. Let's go ahead and put the new one on. And I'm going to show you that next step. All right. So we're going to pretend for a moment that we're putting on a new one. And then let's look at really the first thing that the manual wants you to do. It wants you to take a look at this. Let me zoom in here. This set screw. And make sure that that setting is correct. And this is where you'll need that 8 millimeter uh, wrench because basically what you want to do is untighten this that one's on there pretty good
and loosen it all the way out. All right, so I've backed it up pretty far. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna tighten this till it just touches the stop lever. Now, I made a mistake on this and watched another YouTuber do this, and he said, you know, you touch that lever and then turn it a quarter of a turn. Well, okay, that seemed right because he was going off a Land Cruiser engineering sheet, but that's not what the manual says. The manual actually says turn it till there's no clearance. So to me, that means turn it till it's just touching it. This caused me so much frustration and was largely why I spent pounding my head against the wall trying to get this right. So make sure if you're going to take all this effort, do all this right, make sure that is in the right spot, adjust it, and then you're going to lock it back down um, with your wrench. Now, one of the things that if you don't, if yours is like this one, you're going to see that the, the nut turns with the screw. So if it if yours is doing that and you try to leave it like that, when you turn it, you're going to turn this more and it's going to throw off your adjustments. So what I did on the other one was took this screw off, cleaned it off real good so that the nut uh, would tighten independently of the screw. Because um, you see here, as I turn the nut, the screw goes up. So just give that thing a good cleaning and before you put it back on so that you don't have that problem and you don't throw off your adjustments even more. So as we go over to the next page in the manual, there is a certain section in here that says that what you need to do to put a new one on. And if you do this correctly, I promise you that you will get all of these sensors by just doing this one step correct. And this is what took me forever because of that stop screw for so long was throwing off these two next checks that you gotta do. So I'm gonna again show you how to do this on the old one and then we'll bounce over to the new one. Okay, we're back now we have it set up as if we were putting on a new throttle position sensor. I have my feeler gauges that, that are supposed to be 0.93 millimeter or a combination of feeler gauges that gets you very, very close. We have our test leads set up on IDL in E2, we have our screws loose, and this thing should be rotated all the way back towards us, like that. And then what you're gonna do is rotate this until it deflects to no continuity. And at that, once you find that deflection point, you can tighten up the screws a little bit. And what you're trying to find is that very fine spot right before it deflects to no continuity and it'll take you a couple tries but once you get it very close you're going to tighten this up you're going to disconnect your test leads and you're going to go with this check you're going to put a 0.7 millimeter feeler gauge in and you should have continuity then you're going to put a 1.09 millimeter feeler gauge in and you should have no continuity. If you do that part correctly, you will get all of these other tests correct. I've done all of that to this one and I'm going to show you now after I did everything how everything lines up perfect with what the manual wants. All right, we've got our deflection point correct. We have everything correct. Now we're gonna go back and check everything. So first check we do is the VTA to E2 with no feeler gauges, and you should have a resistance of 0.3 ohms to 6.3 ohms. We are at 0.6 ohms, so we are good there. All right, so we're in, to our next point now where we have a 0.77 millimeter feeler gauge or combination that's very close to. We're at IDL to E2, and we should have a reading of less than 2.3 kilo ohms. So the meter right now is at 0 0.8.9 ohms. Move the decimal, and that is less than 2.3 kilo ohms. So we're now good there. So now I'm going to change over to the 1.09 millimeter check. All right, now we've moved to our 1.09 millimeter. Uh, feeler gauge setup. We're still at IDL to E2 and we should have an infinity reading or no continuity. 
So we now are good on that check. So now we're going to take the field gauges out. We're going to switch over to VTA to E2. And we're going to open the throttle all the way. And our throttle open position, we should be at 3.5 kilo ohms to 10.3 kilo ohms, and you will see we're at 4.3, so we pass that check. So the next thing we're going to go to is VC to E2, which is that top, very top terminal, and we should be 4.25 kilo ohms to 8.25 and we are at 5.5 so all of these checks out and I'm gonna reiterate if you don't get the 0.93 millimeter check correct you will never get all of these correct trust me I've tried over and over again um, this you know takes a little bit of trial and effort but it, it really depends on everything being right from your stop screw to getting as close to 0.93 millimeters as you can with your combination gauges and getting that check between deflection exactly at the right spot. After doing all this, you can put this back on your truck and hook everything up. I really hope this was clear and, and informative and helps you. And always, if you have any questions, please leave a comment below. Um, thank everyone for subscribing and be on the lookout for the next video. Thank you.